This is the story of a nation caught in a vortex of chaos and destruction, two men at the epicenter of the conflict. General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan and General Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo, also known as Himeti. How did Sudan, a country already scarred by decades of strife, descend into one of its most brutal and destructive conflicts to date? To understand the present turmoil, we must delve into the historical and political backdrop that set the stage for this catastrophe. Since gaining independence in 1956, Sudan has seldom seen peace. The country has been marred by internal conflicts, including two of Africa's longest civil wars. The North-South divide, rooted in ethnic, religious, and cultural differences, has fueled much of the discord. These tensions culminated in the secession of South Sudan in 2011, creating Africa's newest independent state. However, the split did little to stabilize the region. The Darfur conflict, beginning in 2003, brought international attention to Sudan once more. The Sudanese government, under President Omar al-Bashir, was accused of committing genocide against non-Arab groups in the region. Bashir's regime was marked by oppression, the enforcement of strict Sharia law, and the utilization of militias like the Janjaweed to crush dissent. Mohamed Hamdan Dagalo, known as Himati, emerged from the chaos of Darfur. Born around 1974 into the Maharia branch of the Rizagat tribe, Himeti had little formal education, leaving school in the third grade to become a camel trader. His entry into the Darfur conflict was driven by personal tragedy, a devastating attack on his trade caravan that killed 60 of his family members and stole his camels. This propelled Himeti into the ranks of the Janjaweed, a coalition of Arab tribal militias active in Darfur and Chad. Himeti's ruthlessness and effectiveness caught the attention of President Bashir, who relied on Janjaweed fighters to suppress rebellion. By 2013, Himeti had risen to command the Rapid Support Forces RSF, a formally organized version of the Janjaweed, under Bashir's backing. The RSF's power and autonomy made it a formidable force in Sudan, one that Bashir depended on to eliminate adversaries. General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, born on July 11, 1960, in Gandu, Sudan, pursued a more traditional military career. After joining the army at a young age, he rose through the ranks, eventually serving as a senior commander in Darfur. During this period, he worked closely with Himati, coordinating operations against rebel forces. By 2018, following military training in Jordan and Egypt, Al-Burhan was appointed chief of staff of the Sudanese army. The long-standing dictatorship of Omar al-Bashir faced increasing unrest. Protests demanding democracy, basic services, and a new system of governance culminated in a coup in April 2019, led by al-Burhan and supported by Himeti's RSF. The fall of Bashir created a power vacuum, with al-Burhan and Himeti positioned to shape Sudan's future. In the aftermath of Bashir's ousting, a sovereign council was established in August 2019. This council, composed of both military and civilian leaders, was tasked with guiding Sudan toward civilian rule and elections set for 2023. Al-Burhan was appointed head of the council, with Himati as his deputy. Despite the semblance of progress, underlying tensions persisted. Prime Minister Abdallah Hamdok, an economist with extensive experience, sought to address Sudan's economic crisis and stabilize the nation. However, in October 2021, the military, including Himeti's RSF, staged another coup, disrupting the fragile progress. Mass protests ensued, demanding a return to civilian rule. Hamdok was briefly reinstated in November 2021, but resigned in January 2022, unable to control the security forces that continued to suppress demonstrations. By early 2022, Al-Burhan and Himati were firmly in control, steering Sudan toward a democratic transition. However, significant points of contention emerged, particularly regarding the integration of the RSF into the Sudanese Armed Forces SAF. The December 2022 agreement, aimed at facilitating a two-year transition to civilian leadership, stipulated that both the SAF and RSF would come under civilian control, 
However, it lacked a specific timeline for the RSF's integration, leading to further discord. Al-Burhan advocated for a two-year integration process, while Himati suggested a 10-year timeline. The missed deadlines and ongoing tensions highlighted the fragile nature of the agreement and the power struggle between the two generals. As 2023 progressed, the situation deteriorated, culminating in a nationwide civil war. On April 15, 2023, Khartoum was rocked by explosions and heavy gunfire, marking the beginning of intense fighting between the SAF and RSF. Both sides accused each other of initiating the conflict, though the exact trigger remains unclear. The fighting quickly spread beyond Khartoum, engulfing the entire nation. Himati's RSF, trained extensively in street fighting, leveraged their mobility and agility in urban warfare, seizing control of significant portions of Khartoum in the early days of the conflict. al burhans F responded with aerial bombardments, drone attacks, and artillery, targeting RSF positions among the civilian population and disrupting their supply lines. The conflict escalated into a nationwide civil war, with various factions aligning with either the SAFE or RSF. Himeti's forces, buoyed by extensive gold smuggling operations, secured significant financial resources. Meanwhile, the SAF benefited from its control over Sudan's economy, including agriculture and oil. Both sides also received support from foreign allies, turning Sudan into a battleground for international interests. The Sudanese conflict has attracted international attention and involvement. Egypt and Saudi Arabia have supported the SAF, while Al-Burhan has also sought to bolster his forces by strengthening ties with Iran. Conversely, the United Arab Emirates has faced accusations of supplying arms and resources to the RSF, though Emirati officials deny these claims. Russia's involvement has further complicated the situation. The Wagner Group, a private military company with ties to the Russian government, has been accused of supplying the RSF with surface-to-air missiles from its bases in Libya and the Central African Republic. However, Moscow has recently adopted a more balanced approach, aiming to secure a naval facility in Port Sudan by providing arms to the SAF. The war has destroyed agricultural infrastructure, collapsed the economy, and created an impending famine with the United Nations warning of the world's largest hunger crisis. As the conflict rages on, the current epicenter of the war is El Fasher, the capital of North Darfur and the last safe stronghold in the region. The RSF has besieged El Fasher, resulting in hundreds of casualties, overwhelmed hospitals, and blocked food supplies. The capture of El Fasher would give the RSF control over a significant portion of Sudan including its western borders with Libya, Chad, the Central African Republic, and South Sudan. The ongoing war has turned Sudan into a proxy battleground for international interests, further complicating efforts for peace. The deep-seated mistrust between the SAF and RSF, coupled with continued external support for both sides, has made peace talks difficult and unsuccessful. What will it take for Sudan to find stability and peace? Can the nation rise from the ashes of this devastating conflict? Or will the power struggle between two generals continue to tear it apart? Only time will tell. Thank you for joining us on Africa Info Hub. Kindly stay informed, share your thoughts, and don't forget to subscribe for more nuanced perspectives on Africa's geopolitical landscape.